that we were told to believe and was expected to believe. There was no comment. If you were told to go out and go and have the grass, you, it, it, you know, how quick can you go do it? You know, but now, you know, now we give our kids a chance to that quick. You know, why should I do it? Uh, you know, you still got to do it, but you got to ask questions. I mean, you know, I've asked my grandma a question, I've got my feet and so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different, what do you mean it's a Bible trip? I mean, the time is, yeah, the time is just different. So now, when you teach a, you teach a science school class, you got all of these folks that bring in and all that stuff. We were just expected to believe what the Bible says. The Bible says, that you read it from the Bible in Sunday school, you know, vacation Bible school, whatever, but you know, we expected to believe it. But today, I mean, you got, a nine-year-old kid, ten-year-old kid, raising their hand and says, "What?" So, yes, we have to address it, and from a different perspective than we did in the 1950s. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How high it would be on your uh, your list of things to teach, I am not so sure about. Let me go to this one. The nature of God. Let's start off with you. God accepts the worship of all religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. <laughs> well, you obviously are in the minority in America. <laughs> By the way, I'll go speak up because now, Pierre, in spite of the fact that I forgot earlier, we're trying to record you. <laughs> Does this surprise anyone that considerably over half of Americans would say, yeah, 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 it's not expensive at all? No. But that goes back to the Super Bowl commercial now. You just see the commercial where all of them got in the truck together and went to the ball game. Uh, yeah. 25 okay. years ago, you know, that wouldn't have happened. And I was, I was actually impressed that somebody might have been saying that. Somebody's commercial when uh, a mosque had been burned down and the synagogue could you can use that. Yeah. Now, of course, I don't believe in either one of those religions. <coughs> But if I had an empty building and people wanted to worship, I might let them. On the other hand, it's easy to see that the Jew is not endorsing Islam or vice versa. If it, somebody, it becomes more delicate than somebody that's closer to what you do. This endorsement. But yeah, the attitude is God accepts them all. Now, other than Trinity, does anybody disagree with that statement? I disagree with it, but it doesn't surprise me. I think um, America is slowly shifting out of this idea that truth is objective, you know, and it's slowly shifting into this, my truth is right, and if you don't believe it, you're, you know, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> I know that's true for you, yeah, but I don't believe you should shoot up a school. <laughs> but um, it, it's, not, it's not as prevalent as it was before, but this, this whole idea of, you know, objective truth, is has been around for a while now, and I think that that's the, that's the result of that. I think so too. Now, when it comes to what doctrine shall we teach, any of them that we do blanket like this and ask the whole country of, of one sentence, ten word question, you're not going to do the whole picture. I think we do need to allow. I've heard people say God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners because that says something about whether a person's a Christian or not, God's listening. Well, it depends on how you define Christian. Did he hear Clint Ingleson's prayer? And was he a Christian before he his prayer? He did hear his prayer. His prayer. Yeah. And then some people would say, um, well, he doesn't hear the sinner's prayer, which is what Pharisees say. No, I can say that. Okay. If he doesn't hear any sinner who prays, we're all in trouble. Yeah. So where do you define that? So that, there's that in the ones who just think I've got it all in a capsule here. On the other hand, I think to deny Christ is unchristian, and it's not a biblical Christianity that says you can endorse a religion that denies the divinity and sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So, yes, we do need to teach that. And what I think about culture that makes, is, is carrying a stronger 
argument than logic or interpretation is. Our strongest value is to be nice to each other, respectful of one another. We remember the days when people just chewed each other up for their religious disagreements within more and more minor points within churches and among different church groups. And so we're tired of that and push that away. But that pain will match one too far, and I think you were talking about that. To where it doesn't even matter if they believe in Christ, really. It doesn't even matter. All right. I, I lean back towards the guy I read way back when I was an undergraduate. It's a, a lesson that doesn't mention Christ. It's not a Christian lesson. That's a bit of a stretch, but it really stuck in my head. So, yeah, I have a problem with that. What about the ones in the middle? You get anything out of that? Which of those is an issue that needs to be addressed? I think the last question is a loaded question. I don't think that's an easy to answer. About whether he determines. That's not the same question as what God knows. That's a philosophical question. I don't think it would be long time to divide the sheet. Again, I do agree with that. Do you believe that there is a God that he has been Well, across the country, two thirds is a pretty big number. They believe God answers prayers. They believe largely that he's perfect. So they're believers, but they believe in everybody's religion. Uh, I'll go on the ride. This surprises me not in the least. Except that I think the numbers have shifted a little bit. Uh, the first one, I think, is a better question than the second one. <coughs> Sex outside of marriage is a sin. I would, I would be very sure that the majority disagree with that. Now. Don't you, majority of Americans, that per se, sex outside of marriage is a sin. I don't admit that most people believe that. Uh, and I was surprised that roughly 50% did. Whenever this was saying. People understand that it's a thing. They just do it. Well, that's true, too. It really is. That's a, and that's part of the perspective. Now, the reason I say the second is not a good question is to just use the word abortion is loaded. And you get every survey still did half and half pro life, pro choice. Abortion is more complicated than that. Technically, someone who miscarries has had a natural abortion. That's not a symbol. But I know, not, I know that it's rare, but in the rare case that some poor man has to choose between his wife and his baby, those are tough choices. Now, it's not as tough for me, but I sympathize. The other argument people make is uh, a child right But it's still a tough question. But I think, but I think even more people believe that abortion is wrong, they just don't think that I have the right to tell you what you should do in your house. And that's why pro-choice and pro-life are not exactly good terms. Yeah. Each one is, is, is a loaded term. Yeah. Um, but there are people whose biggest value on this issue is that a woman's body is hers, it's a part of feminism, that she should choose, and she shouldn't be encumbered by the fact that she's pregnant. To me, that's, that's a moral issue we do need to talk about. Because what I call convenience abortion. If everybody who found it inconvenient to find out they're expecting a baby ended the pregnancy, it would be a very different world. So that in itself is, is not a sound moral argument to me. But it's not convenient for me at this time. There's another side to it, and that is any congregation we're in is going to have some woman who loves God and at some point made a choice and she's in church and she may regret having made that choice. Or some man may regret having encouraged his girlfriend to make that choice. 
and to just, you know, both things throw out there. Abortion is sinful and, and baby killers should all be killed themselves. It is hardly the time I hear Jesus Christ talking. And so this is a doctrine, the value of human life. It needs talked about, but with compassion and with understanding there are there are unusual circumstances. How many of these rules and stuff are driving people away from the church? You know, from the from these laws on abortion and you just <coughs> uh, you should tell us somebody else what they should do. And uh, and it isn't that that's a very long there for you. You should have the right. Uh, you know, my daughter lives in, my daughter was living in my house and she gets pregnant. Then she's gonna have a baby. If she stays free to support. Yeah, yeah, now once she gets grown and she moves out, I I can tell her how I feel. And we can sit down and talk about it and we can go to scripture and how she was raised and all that. But then still that that's still very strange. But do you want to criminalize it? That's what you're saying. And then whatever the decisions she makes, I'm gonna love her. She's my woman. Uh, let me give you a perspective I have not always had, and it does not change my mind um, in general. I think an abortion part of your own convenience is, is uh, a little bit. It, it can be forgiven like anything. You know, I, 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 I did not know until I was grown and married how my grandmother died, my father's mother. But when he was nine, she died. Now I know that it was from a botched backdoor abortion because my grandfather was so mean she wasn't going to let that man have any more children. And she died from infection. From how they used to do abortions when it was illegal. And I just thought, oh, no wonder my uncle hated my grandpa. You know. uh, that feels different than to just talk academically about whether abortion is simple. What you're saying it was your grandmother? My grandmother. When my father was nine, was pregnant the fourth time. She was not going to let that man raise any more children because he's such a bad father. And so she chose to have an abortion which was illegal and which meant a doctor didn't do it. And she died from infection. Well, I'm, I'm very, that's seriously a very strong woman at that time. But, I'll bet you that story is not nearly as uncommon as we think it is. And so, here was a woman in a time when women really did not have the opportunity to support themselves. Whose husband, I don't know what he did, except that things like that sick, something my father had to do with, had to go to throw papers before you went to school and that kind of thing. But I also know that it didn't have an ounce of compassion in it. But she may have had any choice. And I know how she sleeps with God. She died and my daddy was not. And daddy's not now. But you see how that gives you a different perspective. And for sure, when you're discussing this in your Sunday school class, there very well may be somebody who made that choice and was sorry. And so we need to talk about it. We need to talk about the value of life. We need to talk about our outrage of the, the last school shooting. And, and where did it go wrong? Uh, is it a society? That, so doctrine and society are not really completely separated. And yet I don't want churches to, make, to decide what the law should be on the bunch of them. But I think Christians can have a voice in the public arena without claiming for churches to control the state, just like we don't the state to control the churches. So yes, it's an important it's an important issue. Both of them are. Now you can tell that the people who did some of these surveys have a strong uh, dose of Calvinism in it. Uh, I think that the people who disagree uh, no, no, I think what the, the, the turning point here was whether most people are good by nature. My way of studying life is like, 
I know it probably strictly Calvinist, but there's a lot of people with that in there. Um, so, are people good by nature? And another problem with that is that's kind of a theological language, good by nature. Most people, when they hear that, would say, yeah, that's a good nature person. That's a sour person. You know, that's, that's not the question. <laughs> um, could you take that at face value in, in some sense? Without getting into theological definitions? Most people are good by nature. I don't know. I, I disagree with you. I would say in my mind, that's what I'm saying. You've been, you've been brought up. You've been taught. I mean, you got kids kind of raising kids. Yep. So, I mean, they're, they're, they don't have no respect, no love, no nothing, and no fighting. So, I mean. Do you think that anybody is good by nature? Do you think that people are born blank slates? Wrong? Because there are whole systems of conservative Christian doctrine who say, oh no, Adam and Eve started it, and we are unable to go to, you know, the Spirit helps us because the flesh cannot offer, and they'll say it is, it's not possible for a human being to be good. There are so many things that, that, that you could, you know, because in the environment I grew up, uh, you know, the race was such an issue. But then my grandmother said, if that person is old enough to be your father, your mother, you say yes, ma'am, to them, and you say yes, sir, to them. And, and you can be, and I want you to be polite to them. I don't care what color they are. This all right, you know, they are so you had some teaching that was. Respect people. Yeah, just respect people, and and, and and there were people on the street that was that was giving you a reason to throw a brick. This guy's mean, he's angry, he don't like you because you black, so why like to throw a brick at him? And then my grandmother was saying, I'm totally different, and she thinks you don't like to be cheated. And you know, otherwise, you know, so. A few, and two few. Tell them why, but tell them their thing, and you should treat people the same. Yeah. Not enough. But that's where, if you just followed your culture, we'd still have a racist society. I'm not saying we solved racism, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It would be what you remember when you were a little boy. Going back to the, to the scriptures, you treat people, and my brother believed in that. Right. She believed that Jesus Christ was her. You know, he was her and, and But the fact that other people didn't know yeah. that Jesus taught didn't you give her a reason to be disrespectful. She thought that, and if she thought you were doing otherwise than what she taught you, you don't want to go home that bad. Well, let's move down to the second. And that is allowing that we all agree that everybody sins. Yeah. Is God fair to show his wrath against him? I don't know if I have people who think so. I think it's kind of crazy how that compares to the third question. So the third question of people, yes, yeah, 74% of people think sin is deserving of damnation. No, you got it backwards. They disagree. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The last one I yeah, think is a tough question. There's a difference there either way. Yeah, yeah there's a big difference. The, the words are all important in that middle one, wrath. Um, I'm unhappy when my grandson doesn't turn the TV down and I tell him to. I'm not wrathful. I'm unhappy. But God is wrathful towards sin. And then you come to this last one, and they are getting to him for the gospel. Jesus died for my sin. I'm not Jeffrey Dawson. What did sin do today about that? But that word means something different. That word, that word means something. You know, sense is like the type of wood they had all over the chairs, but they put it in one of those caps. Because they said he had a problem. But I mean, that was just, it's a community. It, it wasn't medical, it wasn't medical about it. Oh, I'm not saying. That was just sin, and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you get forgiveness, and you change, and you move on. And I learned something in the experience. I'm not going to be wrong with that. <laughs> Some of you have had my classes before, and I've told this story, but, you know, I was, at, I was pretty sure you got in the same congregation for almost 20 years. 
there was a young man who was converted to the nature and brought him to the church and I baptized him. He didn't come that much, and I think he was fully converted. They did um, the neighborhood next to mine step up and we'll get richer than ours. We're all middle class business. Okay, short name short. He and two other boys from the nice neighborhood. Uh, picked up a girl who's sneaking out to meet her boyfriend. Tried to get her uh, whatever you do to make her susceptible to have sex. She didn't pull off for it. Maybe somebody knocked her head with her minute, I'm not sure about that. Um, Somebody drove by in the middle of the night and saw them on some old this kind of bridge with clothes hanging over the edge, watching them stood out while there's something going on in the car. They decided that she was dead, which turned out probably not to be true, and took the pipelines that they had picked up the other day and they and threw them in the mountain, blew her head off, and laid her on the side of the road in South Carolina across from where I lived in Georgia. When they were arrested, uh, the lawyers wanted to put three boys in different jails so they couldn't be accused of plotting for their defense. And each was put in solitary. Mine got stuck in this Andy Griffith jail in the former South Carolina. And he couldn't have a contact visit with anyone but the community. So I went to see him every week for a year while he's. You know, that's what lawyers do. They put off any trial for a year. That's what they're paying to do. And uh, I got to know better and better. And I know some of his background, but you can be evil and sick for it. Sick in the sense that you've made psychological reactions that are not normal. But that doesn't take away their evil. I learned that looking into the face, and I learned that there are no good fine answers. So, then that brings me, I want, didn't even think of his name as Jeff, but it was around the same time as Jeffrey Dawson. I'm not either one of them. But to go with this last question, which is only interesting because it's provocatively worded, then I come down to. I believe Jesus died for my sins. How bad are my sins? They're not as bad as those two people I just mentioned. The worst does that make if Jesus' blood was necessary? I thought it was interesting about the question, and that's the, the smallest thing, which is it's kind of an objective term in the first place. You know, I, th I think a lot of us have a tendency to gauge the severity of sin based on, of course, where we're from and everything. And, um, more importantly, a lot of us gauge worse sins based on how they affect other people, mm -hmm. and how they affect those around us, and how they affect our lives here on earth. So we don't, that, that, and without understanding, well, that's not the gauge of sin. That's not the gauge that God sets for sin. I think what they were fishing for, and which becomes now the doctrine, how, how much you want to address this stuff. Do you believe in eternal damnation or sinners who do not decide problems? Regardless of what they're saying. Uh, that is a good question. But, as he said in so many different ways, if you don't appreciate the weightiness of sin, you don't appreciate the beauty of the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So, it, to be loyal to Scripture, I think we've got to put some of this back. Not the caricature of, of Jonathan Edwards about his hoping the light of spider over the fire of the pit. By the way, that was only an illustration to say that that's only the grace God could do that, but he doesn't. But I, and I'm sure it differs, but I don't hear much about condemnation forever. I don't hear as much about sin as I did a long time ago. Everybody, but the ministers teach grace and forgiveness. And I think they should. And I mean, most people understand that we have to know that we can. But, you know, so do they believe in condemnation? 
But what about the ones who don't? We, are there some of those that come to church with believers? Mm-hmm. And how awful is it? I, I, I truly employed it myself, I feel bad. How awful is we never told it? <clears throat> now, I don't pretend to know any more how similar the flames of hell are to propane gas lines. Or what it is that burns up forever, because, you know, a human body doesn't burn it after a while. But I know it's a terrible, terrible thing. And I know that condemnation has a legal sin. And how we, did, were you a sinner or not? Did you turn to God because of your sin or not? Did you listen to what he wanted? I don't think he keeps that anymore. It's not much. So anyway, not a lot of people are worried about going to hell according to this. We lose the priest of God who just was standing there and preached Sunday after Sunday. His, his job was to preach was the living Lord. And, and if, if, if the person keeps coming, then you've got a, a, a chance to, you know, to have some type of faith in we had a discussion about the parents' class about him on the to become a Christian. And, and there were different people that were putting people out and stuff like that. He took a job in the stand Sunday after Sunday and preached the word. And that who would ever come and encourage people to come. And that the word, you know, did the change it. But you know what? I'm not saying you disagree with this. You know. The word hell is on the lips of Jesus more than anybody else in the Bible. I don't care about that. Oh, all right. Hell is an eternal place of judgment where God sends all people who do not personally trust in Jesus Christ. You believe that? You think most people don't? If most people don't believe it, then we don't tell them when we've left out and pulled a box Can I ask a question? Yeah. What about, and I know we looked at the, uh, the world of the, uh, geography mm-hmm. of religion in different places. What if somebody, what if a person was in India? Mm-hmm. And they don't know anything about Christianity. They just know about that particular religion, like Hindu or you know Buddhism. You know, they never had a chance. They just been going off what their parents taught them. You know, and they, they believe what their parents taught them all their life. And then when they die, will they be personally responsible for what they believe or somebody taught them to believe all their life? That's particularly in response to this thing, personal trust in Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. which is an important doctrine. I don't want to throw it aside, but it's a very broad question. My daughter's first college roommate was a high school friend, Bella Patel. Her parents immigrated from India, and they were Hindu. It was, it was fun when we would be getting together with them about getting stuff to get them off to school, and, and the parents would say, oh yes, we will be choosing Bella's uh, lesson, she said. Uh, <laughs> and then on the other hand, Bella asked Rachel, knowing that, that Rachel's father was a Christian preacher, uh, would you mind if I take this picture of my God and put it on the bulletin board? You know, form them. That's all. If you worship something, you could have pushed me into a garden. <laughs> and we were polite. We still have respect and, and affection for Bella. She, she's a physician now. Uh, but if Bella is lost, is because she sinned, just as we sinned before we got signed. If she's lost, it would be because she didn't seek God. The other thing But the Bible says everybody sins. And we can give them reassurance of Christ. I would reword that to, I can't give assurance of eternal salvation to anyone who doesn't trust in Christ. Does that make more sense? I can't give Bible assurance. Because those are too broad for us to judge the world, which is not our job. 
And yeah, most people are not worried about the giraffe. I think the first one is a good description of the American belief about the giraffe. That's the only way I do it. Everybody. That's the only way I do it. I deal with somebody close leaving me. I think this that God is my God and I'll see them again. That's the way I deal with it. So assuming that what we know about Hitler is the whole story, you think he said? I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I hear he's in the rest of the four Gospels. Oh, let me take you back to Jeffrey Dahmer. Y'all, are y'all remember Jeffrey Dahmer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I read this because he had uh, his grandmother had some church Christ that night. He asked to see a preacher. Yeah. And a church Christ preacher came to see him. Yeah. He baptized him in jail. Yeah. So, is it okay with you if he's in heaven? But what about the one that's out there? If we don't have any guys in heaven, it's None of us is choosing to pronounce final judgment on any individual. But it is a part of our doctrine if we believe anybody's going to be lost. And I think it's a new I Paul was responsible for the people. No, he repented. How about Judas is here? Do you have any indication that he repented? And the way they tell that story, do you think they were indicating they thought everything was fine? Uh, I think we heard was his best film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he, just, well, first off, I would say that no, he's not. That's an important one. To think about. But I, I, I think that he took the easy way out. So for sure. I'm confused as to how. What was it? Fifty percent. Someone around there said that, you know, this one Jew, you know, Christian can all make it, and then 54% said Jesus Christ is in the way. The math doesn't add up, there's another lab that doesn't That's right. Um, Let's see. Well, I think it's a good This one, again, is traditional evangelical, a little bit Calvin. What about Joe Osteen's answer? What about Joe Osteen? Did he believe that Jesus Christ was the only way? The host said that, oh, yes, I believe that's what the Bible teaches. But I believe there are other ways to Jesus Christ. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to sound like a Joel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that does not sound like an answer Jesus to me. All right. I think this is a very interesting question. Oh, um, that's okay. So bad. Which one's this pretty good? Is that like I do understand that I don't deserve heaven. But doesn't Jesus talk to people on the sheep side by being rewarded? Is it reward a Christian concept? Not deserving, but in a reward. A, a reward. So in a sense, the thing is, earning is, is the place where there's a, there's a solid doctrine. You don't earn it. But you know what? Well, my daughter was so sick the last couple of years, she did not earn her my life for the time we spent to take care of her children. Never heard of it. She needed to earn it. Never passed my mind. Earn doesn't come into the picture. And so I think we need to get that earn out of our picture. We earn our father's faith. 
So I can see why you would say that. But everybody, there are a lot of people think that, you know, that person had both of them because they were so good. Is there any like, um, with our justice system, like, if there's people that committed a crime, but one of them, like, admits to it, they're going to have less of a punishment, or can get out of their punishment. So, I've heard it compared um, to that, like, because we make the big choice to choose Jesus, we're then rewarded for that. Huh. The, uh, the 19 year old who shot the people in Florida is going to plead guilty, hoping that the judge won't send him to death. He didn't earn squatted. If he gets it, it's still going to be mercy. But, you know, he can play a role in it, but still, he hasn't earned anything. What happened to the guy that you met in jail? Did he, was he, uh, he may be out by now. He, he was sentenced to life in prison. At that time in South Carolina, you had to serve a certain percent of it. He could have got that out after 30 years. That was 30 years ago? <laughs> Well, my daughter, I might have been 30 years ago. My daughter was in high school, where he went to high school. Not all that. She's pushing 40. All right, look at this. Do you see different groups having different ideas about whether the Bible is the Word of God? Here is an important doctrine. Now, the one on the right, the Bible is the Word of God. Well, that's a pretty open definition. You could believe a lot of things and say it was the Word of God. But it looks like to me half of the Americans wouldn't even say it's the Word of God. Which disappoints me. Does this surprise anybody? It might be a number of things smaller and smaller. Right. And then I said this at least two year olds. But look at the difference between black Protestants and Catholics, for instance. I mean, I'm not surprised young Christians have believed the Bible. I'm surprised it's only 30, 33% Catholics, and I'm surprised it's as much as 19% that are not Christians. 100% mm-hmm. accurate in all of its teaching. And actually, I prefer that statement to the one on the left. Almost to the But it's a loaded question. What's the difference between evangelicals and mainline Protestants? Mainline is traditional First Methodist Church, um, Episcopalian, uh, Northern Baptist, not Southern Baptist, uh, just That's high church. High church yeah. Evangelical is uh, you believe there are certain fundamentals like heaven and hell, and you follow the Word of God. There's some non <coughs> And mainline, which is the group that's shrinking rapidly. Uh, and in our uh, history, the disciples of Christ are main line. And the churches of Christ and the churches of Christ and Christian churches, what we call the independent Christian churches, are more like that job. Yeah, um, that's self reporting, capital. The Bible is helpful but not literally true. I think that a uh, literally is a tough word and in biblical scholarship I think we need to be careful with that word um, if you're talking literal if you literally mean literal when Jesus said I am the door to the sheep is that literal? Yeah, it's and so in the vernacular that's but you don't mean that as you know a technical term of language that it's literal. So that would mean different things to different people. But in the Catholic faith, though, you have a history of, of not encouraging the teaching of the Bible. You, you know, you've been encouraged to understand all the Catholic documents. And the church gave you the yeah. Bible. The church yeah. will tell you what it means. Yeah, and the folklore. Told you what, you know, you really want the Bible. He interpreted the Bible in a way like that. Let's look at a few more. All right, do we believe in any orthodoxy? Oh, look, I'm going to bring the Bible in. 
the opening of Luke, and I chose the old version because of certain wording. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are surely believed among us, I put it down in order, so that you might know the certainty of those things. There is the purpose of Luke's gospel. You don't have to wait. Yeah. But I find that phrase, the, the goldish phrase near the top that's underlined, intriguing. Things that are surely believed among us. What are the things and who are us? Who is us? Uh, but I believe that's a biblical concept. And I believe that as serious Bible students who want to take some kind of leadership role, we need to deal with well, what is truly believed in my life. And that's why I'm pushing you on God. And then the certainty of those things. I'm not certain of the chronology of the last week of the last prophecy. It's confusing. I'm not certain of the chronology of the going zone between Paul and the Corinthians and the extra letters and all that stuff. So those are not certainties of Scripture. But what is it that we would have to be certain of in the Gospel is pretty plain to sort out who Jesus is. Yeah. And then, in contrast, this is what we're at. Context, context, context. But, you know, Paul had this difficult relationship with the Christian church. They didn't like it. He had to correct them, the apostle, and they didn't like that. And so they accused him of being wishy-washy. In Jerusalem, he seems to be kind of Jewish. In Athens, he seems to be kind of Greek. Though I am free from all, I made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. Now, on the surface, this sounds, and I'm sure the Spirit inspired him to write this way on purpose, but it's kind of a slap in the face. To the Jews, I became as a Jew. So I'm not with the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law. Well, not make myself under the law. So that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without law. So not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ. So that I might win those who are without law. So the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all means I may save some. To do all things for the sake of the gospel. So I can be a fellow protector. So we have the things that are certainly believed in us. And then we have the disagreements like to what extent the Jewish law would apply to the Gentiles. And I think he's saying, I'm not going to take that firm stand with the Judaizers. And I'm not going to take the firm stand with the Gentiles who don't think it doesn't really make any difference. But I will relate to them on where we really are. I can talk about, yeah, I have my weaknesses too, but that doesn't mean I'm a drop like you are. But I'm not going, but in a leadership role, I can talk about, you know, God has given me the strength to resist. And so, you do adapt to the situation in which a person is, even in regard to some teaching. And yet, doesn't that seem a little bit uh, shallow or hypocritical or wrong? Does it seem wrong? If you really just talk about, I, I can find common ground with anybody. Well, I'm not going to this. You know, I think what he's saying is that those things that are not essential, they are essential. But he didn't say anything about throwing away believing yeah, in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He's not going to throw those things away. But if if you've got a tradition of going to church on Saturday, you know, I'm, I'm like, well, I'll go to church on Saturday. You know, that's not a tradition. 
But if you were invited to an audience with the Pope, you'd find out what the truth goes on. Exactly. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you think the Pope is, yeah. right. is always the Catholic Church teaches. It's just honoring the people that you're ministering to. So, but then to do that, you do need to be aware of which are the way you're in that Which things are all first important. And that's why doctrine does matter. <coughs> um, I'm not going to go beyond this one. You familiar with this early atheistic position? We we'll run up against that, and it's very much in the world. Is that time to make a doctrinal statement? Mm -hmm. So that's what I've asked you this one. We'll try to pin it down. I really want to move. On the chart today, we're supposed to talk about making it practical. We'll try to extend that next. Okay. Remember, you got lots of papers to write because I need more papers to write. That's why you find them. Hmm? That's why you find them. Love reading. <laughs> yeah, the document tape on the twenty-sixth, and then we still got the expositions on the fifteenth. Are you giving me? No, it's a little hard for me. Yeah, yeah. Before spring break, is what it was. Well, I'm just giving them a little bit. That's what I read. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Let's get the first one in. Doctor, I found a lot of stuff on the humanity and the dignity of Jesus Christ. And, and you, you know, 